today we're gonna have a shmup extravaganza. We're gonna go through a myriad of uh, shmup games. Uh, we're gonna test out a Sega Saturn Radiant Silver Gun, which is not gonna run well at all. It's gonna run god awful, but since many people wanna see how it runs, I'm still gonna run it for a moment here. It'll be the first game we check out. We're gonna go right through a whole smorgasbord of shmup games, and shmup stands for shoot 'em up. And I've been a huge, huge fan of these games all the way back since the Atari 2600 days. And this is made by Treasure. They make some incredible games. And a part of the Treasure team was on the original Contra development team for NES, but. They went on to make games like Gunstar Heroes, and I'm going to show you another game they made too. But this is about as good as you're going to be able to run Radiant Silver Gun. This is using the performance upgrade in my RetroArch Extreme, of course. And if you really, really want to play this game, the best way to possibly play this is to have an Xbox 360 and or Xbox One. You can download it on your Xbox 360 or backwards compatibly download it on your Xbox One. But I mean, this is uh, not very playable here. And of course they also made the incredible Dreamcast GameCube game called uh, Ikaruga. But this is Radiant Silver Gun. We're going to move on to the next game. And let's see what else we have to check out here. But yeah, this is uh, arguably one of the best shoot 'em up games ever made. And the best way to play it is either on a real system or to play it on the Xbox systems. Here we have uh, Kyo Flying Squadron, which is an incredible cotton inspired shmup game on Sega CD. And we know what happens when we play a Sega CD or a Turbo Graphics CD game. We have the impeccable OST music to it as well. Right from the initial incredible BIOS music here. We're going to jump through a bunch of these shmups here and hopefully there will be a few that you guys and gals have never played before and new discoveries for you to check out. In the eighth year of the KO era, but yeah, yeah, Sega CD always had to have some sort of video interlude in your game. I can handle that. But if you like Cotton, which is also another game that does not run well unless you run it on, say, PlayStation 1, the import version of it, this is a very, very Cotton-esque style game. We're going to get right into the meat of the action here. I would say it's a cutesy shmup, but not very, very easy. It's not a pushover game. Very, very interesting game. Like I said, quite a bit like Cotton. Fits right into the scheme of things. Has a bit of a jazzy pop influenced uh, OST here. The Keo Flying Squadron, not at all a bad game. And we have to add the saxophone in there to give it a little bit of a Law and Order style theme. <laughs> and it looks like I died. I lost all my three lives that quick. But that's Keo Flying Squadron. We're going to move on to the next game. And shmups are generally not that easy. Uh, we have one of the first shmups that I've ever played on the Atari 2600 called Cosmic Arc. Made by Imagic and they made it a, a bunch of really cool games and they're a lesser known company but uh, they made some great games. <laughs> kind of like this Simon thing where you can uh, shoot left, right, up and down before each level then you have to get out and rescue little people before something comes and blows up your mothership. Looks like I gotta rescue both of them. It's been a while since I played this game. And it looks like I'm gonna be losing here. There we go, I failed on that one. <laughs> Let's try this one more time. 
I used to play this game quite a bit when I was a kid, and even this part right here is pretty addictive, that up-down, left to right thing. See if I can do it right this time. One down. This seemed to be a common denominator with all these classic games is uh, trying to rescue people, like in Defender and such. Not bad. Now we're going to go back uh, and try out the next game in the list. We got quite a few more to go. We have uh, Boogie Wings. This had uh, Data East encryption, but it now works on MAME 2003 in my core set. And I have showed this in a previous video. It is an awesome, awesome game. Data East, Taito, Irem, they make some incredibly awesome shmup games. But uh, yeah, definitely check out my Irem video too, because I show over 20 different Irem games, include many, many shmups in that one. Very high, high speed frenetic game here, and this doesn't work nearly as well on Main 2010, but it runs awesome on Main 2003. Get a little bit of a cool gimmick when you lose your uh, main vehicles too. Like if I get hit enough times, I'll lose my main vehicle. But uh, look at this—I have a, a, a battering ball here. It's really cool. A wrecking ball, should I say? Right here. I have a contra mode once I lose my vehicle. There are other gimmicks too where you can actually pick up stuff and use them as weapons. It's awesome. Great soundtrack, real kicking soundtrack here. I'm back in Contra mode. Here, I got multiple vehicles I could use. So it's got a little bit of a Contra feel to it. Even a little bit of a Metal Slug feel. I mean, it's an incredibly awesome game all around. And oh, that was Boogie Wings. Awesome, awesome game. MAME 2003. Gonna move to the next in the line here. Go right down the line to the user interface here. Uh, we have Bucky O'Hare, which is a pseudo uh, run and gun shmup game. It's a different type of game here. These will not be all your typically true shmup games. I'm going to be jumping into a uh, little bit of hybrid shmups too. And that EEPROM check right there is actually the reason why mini games cannot use suspense states for MAME. They work with uh, Final Burn Alpha, but on the NES, SNES Classic, EEPROM saves do not work correctly with any of the MAME cores, unfortunately. So we're going to jump into this game here, which is a little bit of a, a run and gun hybrid shmup. Made by Konami. Can't go wrong with Konami. See what I mean? A different type of shmup game here. <laughs> and it's not your tried and true shmup game like Radius and all that, but it has definitive uh, shmup elements to make it stand out from the pack. Really, really cool game here. Definitely worth a shot to play out. This is Bucky O'Hare. Okay, let's see what else we have to check out here. I'm sure we got a couple dozen games left to go. We have a Dangon Feveron, made by none other than the great masters of shmups themselves, Cave. You cannot at all go wrong with any Cave shmups. Let's see what we have going here. And this is an interesting game because it has a bit of a disco fever soundtrack going on with it. It's ridiculous at times. And I am running all these via MAME 2003. Any that I am not running with MAME 2003, I will point out to you. But as of right now, these have all been MAME 2003 arcade game-wise thus far. Really, really funk, funky soundtrack here, like uh, Parliament Funkadelic going on here. 
They even make the enemies dance in patterns that really kind of go with the vibe of the disco soundtrack. But a really, really cool cave shmup, and you, like I said, you cannot go wrong with any cave shmups. Definitely not disappointed here. It's something I would definitely come back to. But we got many, more, many, many more games to check out here, including several more cave shmups. Here we have uh, Darius Gaiden, Silverhawk, which does have a performance grade in today's core set update. You can run it with MAME 2003 and it runs a lot better than it did before, as you will see. And this game is also on the PSP. You're able to run this on PSP core as well, if you have the PSP version of it. But if you want to run the MAME 2003 version, it runs much better with the performance upgrade I added. Not nearly as bad as it was before. Much more manageable. It's a fairly CPU intensive game to begin with, so don't expect perfection, but it is running better than it did before. This is quite a trend with many of these uh, shmup games having jazzy style soundtracks. It seems to be a common theme here. Is that Bjork in the background or somebody just sounds like Bjork? Loving this uh, real, real soundtrack today. And that's a, a, a recurrent theme with the Darius games is having a uh, real music in them. This is awesome. I'm loving it. Definitely adds to the feel of the game. And that Psycho Soldier made by uh, SNK is the game that I showed you in one of my previous videos that had a soundtrack, an early, early soundtrack pre-1990s, which was awesome. Digging the soundtrack, and uh, there's gonna be a surprise at the tail end of this video. Now, I'm loving that background there, how it shows that big monster fish in the background. And there it is. Look how awesome this is. But uh, we're gonna move on to the next game here. I mean, you cannot go wrong with any Darius games. They're all awesome, each and every one of them. And we're doing another cave game called Don Patchy. And this is running via MAME 2003 as well. And I'm not going to be covering the Thunder Force games today, but I'll get into those in a future video. I mean, there's just so many different shmup games. I can't cover all of them in this video, but I'm going to cover as many as I can that came off the top of my head. And I have bought this game. <laughs> Every single time any of these cave games show up, I buy them as much as I possibly can. There's actually quite a few shmups that are available on mobile phones now, such as the Raiden series. Truly epic gameplay here. One of the best shmups you could ever play. Jamming soundtrack, electric guitar going, blaring in the background here. Not a hint of slowdown, MAME 2003 handles this exceptionally well. We have Don Patchy here, the original. And many people almost consider Cave the king of arcade shmups. I mean, that, that's hard to disagree with. They really do have an incredible uh, 24 or so arcade games. 
Really, really digging this game. Out of all the ones I've played so far, I'd almost say this is my favorite out of the bunch. Out of the ones I pre I played here, but we got a few more to go. I'm definitely coming back to this one. In like pinball games, shmups have that uh, you can jump right into them, play them, or you can learn the mechanics and go for the high scores. Here we have Esprayed. Another fantastic arcade shmup. And even though it is a niche genre, there are several hundred shmups out there, so it might not be as niche as we think. Another great cave game. And you notice that Atlas is on the logo there. I'm not sure if they had any development time with this or if they published it, but Atlas makes their own incredibly awesome RPG action or two. Amazing. Everybody's cool as Don Patchy. I'll take back my statement that Don Patchy is the best I've played thus far because nearly every game I've played in this list thus far, in the user interface list, I'm loving every one of these. It's one thing I love about shmups is you can go between uh, overhead shmups to 3D shmups to side scroller shmups. There's just so many different different view perspectives you can play in, so it gives them all a unique gameplay style. Really, really awesome here. This is a spray. But of course we have many, many more to go to here. Here we have uh, Gu Wan Ji from 1999, also by Cave. The game right before this, I didn't test yet, so I'm not 100% sure it's going to run, but I'm going to give it a shot anyway. All these other ones I have tested. But I'm going to attempt to run Gunbird, a Capcom uh, game next. Let's see if I can get that running. But this one here is a, a true surprise of a shmup game. It has a, a feudal Japan theme to it, which is awesome. I mean, look at this. I mean, many, many years ago when I first played uh, MAME, this was one of the first games that truly blew my mind. You actually have uh, foot soldiers that culminate in a spoo of blood, which is really cool. That's that's something you would typically see in the shmup game, but look, they're splattering in that blood pile there. Really, really awesome. Definitely digging this one, but I'm going to cross my fingers now and hope Gunbird runs because that really is an awesome game. We're going to try it out for a moment here. It might be the only game in this uh, test that might not run, but I'm going to check it out and hopefully it does load and run. And again, you'd have your typical games where they, even though you might have Capcom on the logo, it might be made by an entirely different company. And it appears to be running. We're going to see if it shows who made it. Psychico. Psycho. I always thought Capcom made this. Guess I'm learning a new thing every day. <laughs> Yet another great game. There's a phenomenal Gunbird too, and I believe there's a Gunbird game on the Dreamcast as well. But it's not made by Capcom, apparently it's Sakayo. If I pronounced it wrong, I probably uh, mangled that pronunciation. 
Here we have, uh, Felios. Which is an incredible arcade game made by Namco. And I absolutely love the Sega Genesis version of this. That's one of my favorite Mega Drive Sega Genesis games when I owned it. And of course, Namco also made the incredible Dragon Spirit. This one seems to have a bit of a performance issue, so it looks like I might have to performance upgrade this one. But I could try the Mega Drive version, I believe I have that in the playlist, but it looks like I have another game to performance upgrade here. It has a little bit of a, a problem running. Here we have Pro Gear, and this one is not going to run on MAME 2003, it is running on MAME 2010. It is one of the examples of a game that, it says Capcom on it, but it was actually made by Cave. It is a Capcom CPS2 game. That typical CPS2 logo. This is one of the very, very best of the CPS2 games. And one of the best cave shooters, and this is a perfect example of a side-scrolling cave shooter. This is every bit as cool as In the Hunt, made by Irem. I mean, this is absolutely fantastic graphics, gameplay, music, and all that jazz. Pro Gear, MAME 2010. But we got a few more games to check out. But look how awesome this looks. I mean, definitely a game to play. And it's two-player to boot. You cannot go wrong with any two-player shmup. Here we have Three Wonders. This is actually another game, and it has a hybrid of genres. You can play a, a platformer section game, a puzzle game, and a shmup game. And we're going to play Chariot the Shooting Game. And it has another bit of a cotton feel to it. Real upbeat music, great colorful graphics, great gameplay, I mean. <laughs> So yet another one that's definitely worth the time to play. Again, this is Three Wonders, and it is the sub-game within Three Wonders called Chariot. Let's see if we can get another uh, few in here. Of course, the great Capcom UN Squadron, which is also an impeccable home port on Super Nintendo. I always love these style games where you could go to shops and buy power-ups, like Fantasy Zone and this and such. There it says Die Pro and Capcom, so I'm wondering if Die Pro actually made the game. You never know who published or actually designed the game until you really dig deeper. But you can go to shops before each stage, which is always cool in games, and again, you can do this in games like Fantasy Zone, UN Squadron, and of course Forgotten Worlds, which is also made by Capcom. And it's yet another two-player game. So it looks like quite a few of these games today have two-player options on. But this is you and Squadron. Let's move on to the next game. I played quite a bit of this game on Super Nintendo. Here we have Panzer Dragoon Mini. We can't play Panzer Dragoon Saturn because it is too slow, but we can play the Game Gear version of it. And see how this plays out. And I'm sure many of you guys and gals have not even known this game has existed. Yep, 
Yes, Game Gear has its own surprises. Yeah, unfortunately, Panzer Dragoon runs probably between 5 and 11 frames per second, if even that, on the Yaboo's Sega Saturn core. It is god-awful, and there is no way to truly play it. And I believe they actually made uh, a Panzer Dragoon mobile game as well. And of course, on Xbox One, we just got the... Uh, the natural continuation of Panzer Dragoon. I actually forgot offhand what that game was called because it's not called Panzer Dragoon. But it is on Xbox One and it's one of the very first games I ever purchased on it when I got the system. But this is a Panzer Dragoon Mini. Yeah, I've been through so many games that every once in a while a name of a certain game will escape me. Here we have uh, Galaxy 2 by Epic. This is actually a handheld game from decades ago. And it has a little bit of a Galaga feel to it, which is really awesome for a handheld game. And there's some awesome technology going on here at the time. So I can actually, uh, I'm using the Game Watch Core here. I'm, I turned it on <laughs> with the L button. And here, uh, pushing the start button tells me what my controls are. I powered it on. I'm going to start the game. <laughs> I just got to get the game going here, of course. There we go. I had to push the start button. So again, if you're playing any of the Game & Watch games, you can push the start button and it'll show you the controls. I had to power it on, then I had to push R1 to start it. I didn't push start, that's why I was unable to start the game. Pretty awesome for a game that came out in the 1970s. Really, really awesome here. I'd say either late 1970s or very, very early 1980s for this one. And it actually has different levels. It's not just one style. I mean, there's different patterns here. See, I'm on a second style of gameplay here. Really cool. But there's like uh, apparently like four or so of them. We're going to move on to the next game in the list here. Got a few more to go. We're going to try out one of my absolute favorite Mega Drive shmup games called Troubleshooter. I mean, if you remember the amazing soundtrack to the TMNT game, this is the closest thing to it that I've ever encountered in a video game. And awesome, awesome game. Real upbeat and epic soundtrack here. Really digging the soundtrack here. Is that fast beat tempo just like the TMT game has? Really digging this game, you know. Many of you are wondering, how do I discover these gems? This is actually uh, many years ago when they had bookstores in the malls. I would go in there and I would uh, sit there reading the Game Pro magazines, the Electronic Gaming Monthlies, and this game was on the pages of Game Pro with a five star rating. I'm like, I gotta try this game out, and I immediately bought it and I loved it. It was a great shmup to have. To me at the time, a game ha having a 5 star rated in the Game Pro magazine definitely stood out. This is one of those games that had a 5 star rated. 
So that's Troubleshooter. Awesome game there. And we should have time for at least a couple more here. Here we have uh, Ironclad, which is actually a bit of a curiosity because many, many years this has been on the Neo Geo CD. And people have argued whether or not it truly existed on cartridge. And then all of a sudden one day on the Nintendo download, uh, I basically added this game to uh, the Wii. Surprised everybody. A ROM dump of this game showed up on the Wii. But people would actually take pictures of them owning the real cartridge even though it didn't really exist at the time. They were just posting fake pictures online, but the ROM dump finally turned up because it turned up on the Wii and then people took that ROM dump, extracted it, and put it on uh, homebrew cartridges. But this is one of the best Shmup games ever made, and it's on uh, able to run on May 2003. It is a Neo Geo game, by the way. It has that little bit of R type feel to it here. Where you have that disengaging unit that can come back and forth. Really, really awesome game there. This is Ironclad. And that's the English translation of it. It does have a different game. The true name of it is different. We have another incredible Neo Geo game. And many, many years ago, when I actually got this from a website, on 56K, it kept failing and failing over and over again. It literally took me probably uh, three days to download this one single game, which is around 52 megabytes on a 56K connection. Download managers didn't quite exist at that point. So I was stuck trying to download it on 56K and having it fail miserably over and over again to my disappointment. But the moment I got it running on my Windows 98 computer, even though it didn't run that great, it was one of the best games I've ever seen. I mean, look at this 3D effect right from the get-go there. Look how awesome that is. A shmup with dinosaurs. Can't go wrong here whatsoever. <laughs> Loving it all the way. This is prehistoric island.